I'm a pattern addict. Take a look what I got here. These are just a small, very small selection of patterns that I use in my wood shop. I make a pattern for everything. Now being in the business, it makes sense for me to make a pattern because I may have to come back and repeat that process. But for you guys at home, if you're just an everyday woodworker and you're going to be building a project once, you might think, why make the patterns? There's a number of reasons. Let's say, for instance, I just finished this pattern and I've got it nice and cleaned up and ready to go and for some reason I knock it off my bench or I drop it and it snaps in half. If it's unusable, you have to go back and make a new one. So if you're working from a paper pattern, you got to print that pattern back out, bring it in, re-glue it to your piece, cut it at the bandsaw and do all that. With this pattern, all done on plywood, all I have to do is clamp it in place, cut close to the lines and run my router around it and I'm right back in operation. The other thing is, and there was a time, if you actually look here, this is a bracket foot that I did a pattern for. And I used that because my oscillating spindle sander was broken at the time. And I needed a way to do these feet right away and get a nice clean surface or edge. So the whole idea is take this runner pattern bit around it and clean it up and you've got a super smooth edge produced by the router. And it's very simple to work on. So we're going to be talking patterns and how to, to make them work for you in the shop. So let's take a look at some pattern bits and we'll talk about some of the variations. Here is a, a group of these bits and you can see different sizes uh, for sure, different shank sizes as well. But the thing I really want to call attention to is the location of the bearing. There are top mount bearings, bottom mount bearings. This one has top and bottom. If we look up here, this is a three quarter inch pattern bit with a top mount bearing. It is the workhorse in my shop. I use it all the time. It constantly stays in my router. If we take a look at the small router here, we have a top mount bearing as well, and it's a very small bit. So what makes the difference between the small bit and the three quarter inch bit when we start looking at our patterns? Well, the idea is the larger the radius that you have, the more round area you're going to cut when you hit an inside corner. So for instance, if we look at this piece right here, Whenever I get to one of these inside corners, I'm going to have a radius right here. Now that radius with a three quarter inch bit is going to be three quarters of an inch radius or three eighths of an inch radius right there. If I come back and I use a much smaller bit with that, then I'm going to tighten that radius up and that's going to leave me less material that I have to clean out when I go to that section. So that's the reason you'll want to vary uh, sizes of the diameters of your router bits. Now, how do you choose top mount, bottom mount? Well, that's a decision that you have to make depending on the way you work. For the most part, I enjoy putting my pattern on top of my workpiece and working with the router below or the, the cutting action below. So the top mount bearings are what I generally use. There have been times though where it makes sense to be able to flip the piece over and work on the top section, say in a router table where you would hit the, the bearing at the bottom or you can actually work on this side with a bottom mount bearing and cut that piece out with your handheld router. So there's ways that you'll want to do both of them. I primarily use the top mounts. All right, so let's talk about the process. I'll move some of these out of the way. Here you can take a look at, this will be a setup that I've made for an end table or a dressing table that we actually published in Popular Woodworking Magazine in June of 2010. And Make sure that you mark all your patterns because it's great to be able to go back and refer to them whenever you need to. Now if I clamp this in place or double stick tape this down and start to use my pattern bit, I have a lot of material that I have to cut out of here. So instead of just letting that material be hauled out of there with your router, you want to save the sharp edge on your router. Lay it out, mark it up, go to a bandsaw, go someplace and cut that and remove a lot of that stock before you get into the actual trimming part. And that brings us to this pattern here. So if we take a look at this pattern, the way it's lined up right now, I've got a majority of this material cut away. So that means that I'm just going to be trimming ever so little bit with my pattern bit. That's going to save the bit longevity. It's going to make it work for me and keep it sharper for a lot longer. And you have a better way to work. All right. So once you get a pattern like this, and this is a rather complicated pattern, there are some things you have to look at when you get into router work and pattern work. As you come into this cut, everything works fine until you get right here. Because of wood grain, as your router bit starts to flake this out, it's a possibility to knock this area off. 
Now it's more apparent right here. If I would come out with my router and come right over here and roll all the way off of this pattern, that end tip is very likely going to flake off of there. So what you have to do is evaluate your piece and understand where you're going to cause problems like this. And routing this piece, I would start right here at this point and work this direction and then come back and climb cut this direction. Now climb cut's working in the opposite direction of the router rotation. And what that does is it keeps that router bit from taking this piece and flicking it out that way. So you really need to study your pattern and find out those areas. So here is a good one. Here, as we talked about, as I come around here, I have a possibility of flaking this out. So I would start here and roll back into this and climb cut over to this area and then take it from here. So then you're moving in the right directions. Um, you can see here all the different areas that have very small pieces cut in them. Those are going to be areas that you have to hand cut or go back and clean up. So once you get your pattern applied, you want to take a pencil and go across and around each of those areas so you have that written into the piece. So with all that in line, let's go ahead and I'll clamp this up and I'll run a little bit and show you the difference in what's going to happen. I think when you see how the two router bits uh, affect the work, you'll get a good understanding about why you'd want to go to a smaller bit for your detail work. Now it's not always the case. There's some cases where you just need to get material out of the way and of course a larger bit is going to work better in that position. All right, so let me go ahead and grab this plunge base back here and get this all set up. All right. Now one of the keys as you're getting ready to use this is you need to make sure to plunge this uh, router bit out far enough that your bearing is hitting your pattern. You don't need your bearing below it for sure because you won't be cutting and if it's above it you're going to ruin and destroy your pattern. So you want to make sure to drop that just to the point that the bearing is sticking out. In this case, and that's one of the advantages of a top mount as well, it's very simple to set this up. You actually can just look right down your router and pull it until that pattern or that bearing comes just out of the base. Okay. Now if I begin right over here in the center, let's just start right here and you think about it. This diameter router bit is going to come right in and clean all this area out. But if you look at the size of the three quarter inch uh, router bit, that radius is actually less than three quarters of an inch. So you know that this router bit is not going to help you in this area whatsoever. So that's one of the keys to deciding what size router bit you want to use. Now as we begin this, I'm just going to make a shortcut. I'm going to pick it up. You can actually see right here that I've stopped this process. I'm going to pick it up right here and move through this. And then back here, I'll show you how I would climb cut. I'll start right here and roll this direction. And then I'll start right here going this way as well. All right, so a good operation there. You could see the uh, when you climb cut that you have to be prepared for that climb cut because if it does catch, even though we're using a thin router, it's going to move you around. So get your arms set up to where you can really make a difference with it. So here, if we can get a nice close-up area right here, you can see with that small diameter router bit, I actually end up with a super little radius right here. And that's very easy to touch up. And that also is a... a result of using the thin router. So the idea behind patterns and pattern routing is it's very simple to make complex layouts and you have a way to do it if you need to go back and do it a second time. And it uh, makes it super easy to do. 
choose the bearing and choose the bearing location, whether top or bottom, based on a number of different things. I prefer the top mount bearing, and that's what I use generally in the shop. But it is a super way that you can just come in with the most intricate patterns and repeat those repeatedly each time that you need to get them done.